All right, I've got two more hosts I'm going to add. This one here, CentOS 7 VM. It's going to be running for my Windows 10. And another server on the internet, sbcode.net. And I've already installed Zabbix Agent on both of these things. And in this video, I'm going to auto-register both of those. So that one's behind the firewall and that one isn't. I'm going to auto-add them to the group Linux hosts. And I'm going to auto-assign them the active Linux templates. Okay, so let's look at the configuration for the CentOS here. ETC Zabbix, Zabbix Agent Conf. Okay, so I haven't started this yet. It's currently stopped. I've set the server being zabbix.shawmonsy.com, but that's not important yet because I'm not doing any passive checks. But what's important is the server active here because I'm assigning the template with all the active checks. The host name is CentOS 7 VM. And there's one more item down here called host metadata. I'm going to add that Linux. I can put anything I like there, as long as it's less than 255 characters. I'm going to use this information to know which template and which group to assign to on the Zavix server during the auto registration process. During auto registration, there's very limited data that the server knows about to know what to do with the new host wanting to be registered. You could put something in your host name to say or suggest that it was Linux, and CentOS is a pretty good indicator. But not everyone names their hosts like this, so you can use the host metadata property here and just create something, anything you like. Host metadata for me equals Linux. Control X, yes. Now on my other server, on the internet, the SB code server, I'm SSH'd onto it. I've done the same thing, I've installed Zabbix Agent on Ubuntu 18 this time. So that was the URL, Zabbix 5 release Bionic there. So I had to be careful about that. Pseudo nano EDC Zabbix agent conf. And if I, if I scroll down, look at my settings, I've set server, which was unnecessary until I do passive checks. But I have set active. I've set the host name to be sbcode.net and my Host metadata is also Linux. Control X. Now go into Zabbix. Configuration hosts. Neither of those servers exist in this list. So let's auto add them. So down here in actions, we look at this top drop down here. It's not very visible in this version of Zabbix 5. But click auto registration actions. Like that. Now we can create an action. I'm going to call this action auto add Linux hosts. Condition, we have some choices here. We could use host name or host metadata or proxy. Select host metadata contains Linux. Add. All right. Now click operations. Let's add the host. Then add the host to a group Linux servers. Add link to template. Select your template. I'm going to use template OS Linux by Zabbix Agent Active. Add. That's very good. Add. Okay, so I have a new action in here that should auto add hosts that make active checks to the server as long as they contain host metadata equals Linux. Those hosts should end up here in configuration hosts in here. Now neither of those servers appear in this list yet because I need to start the Zabbix agents on those servers. Okay so I'm going to start the Zabbix agent on my SP code. Service Zabbix agent start. Now when this starts up it makes active checks immediately because it wants to know about the configuration from the server. All right now let's just do status just to make sure it's okay. It's all good. Okay and on my CentOS so sudo service Zabbix agent start. And let's do the status. 
case active. Now, let's go back to Zabbix server here. And if we look at monitoring hosts, well, CentOS 7 VM has already shown up, and so is spcode.net, so configuration hosts. CentOS 7 VM now exists in configuration hosts. It has several items, so let's have a look at it. By default, it goes into the discovered hosts group, but I've also said add it to the Linux servers group. These are the interface settings that Zabbix server has used. So there's an IP address and a DNS name because it's coming from my internal network. It's decided it wants to use IP, doesn't matter. The template is that OS Linux by Zabbix agent active. All hosts and for my other one, spcode.net. Same thing, it's given it an IP, a DNS. It's chosen to use IP. Put it into the discovered host Linux servers. Templates, once again. So you can add hosts using that method as well. So what decides to put a discovered host in the discovered hosts group is this setting down here in administration general. If we look at this drop down, down in other, down at the bottom, it says group for discovered hosts equals discovered hosts. Or you can do anything you like, but that works quite okay. Because here in monitoring the latest data, you can also filter by discovered hosts. Apply. And in the list are spcode.net and my CentOS 7 VM. Now, neither of those servers have any passive checks enabled. So you won't get the green availability icon there. My spcode.net is on the same network as my Zabbix server. So, and I've already set the server parameter so I could just enable this passive check straight away if I wanted to. Okay, it's done. And with the CentOS, well, I'm going to need to create a firewall rule for that, but I'm not going to bother until I need to. All right, so spcode.net, we just also it doesn't quite show anything there yet, but if we look back at the items there, if I search by local time, and I select here, execute now, because that's a passive check that will work. So hopefully next screen refresh, there we go, it works. Execute now, as I did just then, doesn't work on active checks. See, cannot send request, cannot send wrong item type. So, yeah, excellent. So that's what we did is auto added CentOS 7 VM and this spcode.net host, both of them are Linux. Now you could do that with all of these hosts, but just note that the Mac OS X there only has passive checks in its template. So, I mean, you could create another action specifically for Mac OS X, but if your Mac is behind a firewall, the registration will happen, but the none of the items will work and you won't get any data until you create the firewall. Or, and of course, you could do that for the Windows as well. So, excellent.